So Josh Reichstein, I'm Integrating Territory Manager, look after South Australia. Our breeders are all based in WA and uh, unfortunately they can come here but they're not allowed to go home. So in the barley space, obviously uh, Integrating over the years we've had Spartacus, Latrobe, Roslyn um, have been the varieties that have been out for a few years so probably don't need to touch on them too much but um, a few new ones coming through. So Maximus CL is the Spartacus replacement coming for next year. Clearfield, we are hoping for our multi-accreditation in March next year, so it will be released as a, well, presuming it gets through, will be released as a malting variety from its first year in the ground. Similar plant type to Spartacus, that upright semi-dwarf type, so it's still not super competitive, but uh, looking very nice. It's uh, yielding very similar to Spartacus, not a significant step up at this stage. We're hoping that in a you know, better finish this year, we expect it to probably stick its head up a little bit higher above Spartacus. Its biggest advantage over Spartacus is its disease package particularly Netform, Netblotch. Spartacus has been copying a fair bit of heat from Netform, Netblotch down on the York Peninsula. The Maximus we've had down there has held up really well. So uh, that's a significant step up for disease profile on that. I think Spartacus is likely to go back to SBS for next year. Generally across most diseases, it's a step up. Better grain plumpness in hectolitre weights and the same qualities as Spartacus in terms of its head loss and lodging strength. That's Maximus coming for next year. So seed available, plenty of it around, ready to go for next gen, like I said, presuming malt from year one. The other one that's not in the trial this year, another new Imi Barley coming for next year, which is a compass type. So at the moment we have two lines, IGB 1908 and IGB 1967, that are being bulked up. And I've been told by the breeder that a selection will be coming in the next few weeks. Pretty much for all intents and purposes, very similar to compass, that good early vigor, Good weed competition will have the same issues as Compass in terms of its lodging and head loss. But just to give you another option with a clear field, so um, uh, the sort of one thing everyone's been asking is that more competitive plant type. So that's coming for next year. Will be released as a feed to start with, hasn't entered the mold accreditation process, so um, could be a few years away. Seed is incredibly tight, if not sold out already. So. Um, uh, yeah, one definitely keep an eye on. Uh, so your name will be coming in the next few weeks. Uh, apparently a female gladiator. So if anyone's got any suggestions, I can throw them that way. Someone did suggest Karen, but I don't know if that'll be, I'm not sure if that'll be as topical in years to come, but yeah. So far with Maximus, we haven't seen any smut, but we're not willing to say that's a resistance thing or if the seed source has been kept really clean. So at the moment, things are looking promising, but I don't know if it would, I don't think we'd go as far as saying it's a resistance thing at the moment. It's just been a really clean seed source. So um, yeah, hopefully that stays that way. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Paul Telfer. I'm one of the barley breeders with Australian Grain Technologies. AGT is relatively new to the barley breeding space. We've been involved for about six years now and when the University of Adelaide dispersed their breeding program it was distributed to a number of breeding companies and that included us. It's now exciting that um, this year we've released our first barley variety and that is Beast. This is a variety that did actually come out of the University of Adelaide program. We licensed it in 2016 and we tested it for three years in our program and we were very impressed with its yields in the, the low to medium rainfall areas and it's a very similar plant type to, to Compass. So those familiar with Compass, it's, it's very similar to that. It is a little bit quicker. It's, it's closer to Latrobe in maturity. So the last few seasons that have been typically had a lot of terminal stress at the end of the growing season, it's performed very well with that quicker maturity. In environments that Compass performs well, Beast has typically performed one to four to five percent higher in terms of grain yield. So very excited about the, the grain yield potential in those, those low to medium rainfall environments. At the same time, it like Compass, it's the same plant type in the, the higher yielding conditions. It can be prone to lodging and head loss. So that's something that to, to be mindful of. So in those higher rainfall environments, it, its advantage definitely does drop off. But in the quicker, uh, more stressed environments, it, it really is very competitive and in, in some environments it does out yield Rosalind as well, which being a feed variety is, has been the benchmark for the last few years. So low to medium rainfall environments, it's top end for, for yield. It is being released as a feed, 
but it has been accepted into the Bali Australia Malt Accreditation Program. As you may be aware, that is quite a, a long and arduous process, so we're still a few years away from having a, a malt accreditation for it, but if everything goes well for the 2023 growing season, hopefully we'll have a, a malt accreditation for it. A couple of other points is, as I've said, it's very similar to Compass, so it has the same grain size, if not larger grain size than Compass, but where Compass can struggle for hectolitre weight or test weight, Beast is, is better. In terms of, of disease, it's a decent disease package. It, it can be a little bit weaker for, for leaf scald, but generally quite comparative to most other mainstream barley varieties. And leaf rust is a definite step up from, from Compass, so useful levels of resistance there. And again, MRMS type levels for net form of net blotch and spot form of net blotch. So that's a, a quick summary of, of Beast, the first release, which is very exciting, coming from our AGT program. We do have a few bits and pieces coming behind it, so hopefully in the next couple of years, you'll start to, to see us talking about barley a lot more and um, being able to add, add, add value to that space as well. It, it has, does have some of the genetics of, of the Hindmarsh family in it, so uh, those types can be a little bit worse for, for smut. Generally, it hasn't been as bad as the, the, the Spartacus types, so it's something that needs to be managed in barley. Um, barley is generally more susceptible to it, so it's something to be mindful of, but we haven't seen, seen high levels of it. It's very, very, very closely related to Compass. Really, really good sales of it last year. And I think the biggest news with it is that all things going to plan, we expect Leebrook to be planted next year. It'll go in the ground as an accredited malting variety. Slightly higher yielding than Compass, slightly better grain size, slightly better uh, screenings, slightly better disease package. So they're all just very minor improvements. So La Perouse was known as WI4952, WI for Weight Institute, which you'd all be familiar with, the Adelaide University program. Bred by Adelaide University, where Amanda was the breeder, and was developed by Sacobra. So I'll hand you over to Amanda to talk about La Perouse. So the key features of La Perouse are that it's a improved plant type compared to Compass and, and, and Commander. That's probably the most obvious. It's a shorter plant type, so we would classify La Perouse as a medium, so it falls between RGT Planet and Compass in plant height. It has a very competitive growth habitat. It has improved resistances to spot form of net blotch. So you're looking at a very similar spot form of net blotch profile to, to Fathom, so that MR to MS, and it has improved um, net form of net blotch compared to Fathom as well and Compass. Um, it's got very good uh, physical grain quality, so it's not as good as the, the Compass benchmark, but it's certainly an improvement on Commander if you're familiar with Commander quality. So in crop management, assessment and management needs to be quite diligently tracked through the season. Um, in terms of its um, maturity, uh, we would classify it as a mid to quick spring type. And we're seeing that it might have some flexibility in its phenology so it can be seen as an early sown option. And so in 2020, we, oh sorry, 2020, we've actually got a number of trials um, across Australia looking at the phenology of various different um, varieties, both wheat, uh, wheat and, and uh, barley, and La Perouse is one of those as well. And so there's a number of trials, as I said, and their um, sowing dates range anywhere from early April right through to late June. Um, and so uh, what we're actually looking at is the, the response of La Perouse in terms of, of its phenology, its yield responses, and also its physical grain quality. And so we're really um, excited with some of the first results that are coming through. Um, it's very preliminary at the moment, but we're seeing that in a early um, May sowing, we're seeing that um, La Perouse is actually up to three, four days later than Planet. But when you push into that main season, 
um, May uh, planting date, you'll see that La Perouse will actually be earlier than, than planet. So we see that as quite an exciting thing for La Perouse. 